Welcome everyone to the Fender for Cloud in the field out of band edition. In today's episode, uh, I'm gonna have Ton talking about um, some best practices to investigate uh, secure alerts and Fernanda with the secure score tip of the month. Ton, with you now. Thanks, Yuri, and hello, welcome everybody for this month's uh, Defender for Cloud tip of the month. Today I want to talk about Defender for Cloud security alerts. I recently got a lot of questions uh, from folks coming like, hey Tom, I have a lot of uh, security alerts in my environment. What should I do with them? Because I do not really know how to tackle those. So if we take a look at my security alerts dashboard, you can see that there's quite a lot going on in here. And if you select one particular alert, the first thing that comes to your attention is that you see on the right side some major information about the alert. You will know about the alert severity. So that tells you, is that a high severity alert that you definitely should take care of? Or if it more, is it more something like with a low severity that you might not want to focus on first? You also, in this particular case, see that it's a successful SSH brute force attack alert that contains a little alert description. In this case, there is an IP address from the attacking um, environment. You also have the copy alert JSON body so you can basically click that button and you can copy all the information that the alert contains and add it to whatever solution you want to add it to. Now you have two buttons on the top of that, one of which is, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, on the bottom of it, one of which is the view full details and the other is take action. Now let's take a look at the full details. In this case, again, as I told you, it's a successful SSH brute force attack alert that will contain information about the attacker themselves, but also about the related entities. Now you need to know that every alert contains related entities, but these entities might change from alert to alert. In this case, since it's an um, alert for a virtual machine, it will contain information about the host that has been attacked. In this case, it was my Linux victim. And you also have that Azure ID that contains information about the resource itself. I'm sorry. You also see the related entities with the account names that have been tried to attack. And you have information about which account actually has been successfully attacked. Down below, you also have some other information. In this case, it's uh, the GIU and threat intelligence information that tells you from where the actual attack has been coming. Now, the most important part and the interesting part that might be interesting for you when it comes to tackling the security alert is take action. In take action, the first thing you will see is what to do in order to mitigate the threat. And the first information that you have here is, you should definitely escalate the alert to your information security team. That could be your IT security department, that could be your security operations center, it could also be your managed security service provider, but you definitely should escalate that alert to somebody who knows what to do. Since it's an uh, alert that is going on for a virtual machine, it gives you some other contextual information. In this case, you should possibly add the IP address of the attacker to the network security group block list for this machine. That will basically block the attacker from con uh, continuing to attack the machine. You should enforce the use of strong uh, passwords. You can also create an allow list for SSH access in the network security group and block all the access from IP addresses that are not allow listed there. You also see that there are 11 more alerts on the affected resource. So there are other alerts you should definitely take care of. Then when it comes to closing the loop, the security alert is being created whenever something happens. The recommendations that Defender for Cloud provides are there to create a list of proactive security tools and measurements. So you should basically harden your environment before the attacker is able to attack it. And in order to prevent future attacks, you see the list of the open recommendations here. So there are in addition, um, all eight recommendations, so there are eight recommendations for this particular machine that you can focus on to make sure that no one is able to attack your machine. Then one thing you can also do is trigger a logic app directly from the alert. As you know, we have a, brute attack, um, a block brute force attack alert logic app in our GitHub repository that blocks the attack whenever it is occurring, and you can manually trigger it here. And also, there is a create suppression rule button that helps you to create 
suppression rules for similar alerts in your environment if you feel that this is an alert that is a false positive. That's all for now. Back to you, Yuri. Thank you. That was great, Ton. Now, Fernanda, all yours. Hi, Jerry. Um, thank you for having me back here. And for this month, for Secure Score Tip of the Month, we're going to show um, common issues and solutions that we have seen occur with some of our customers. And these are like very, very common, right? You have customers that are seeing that their Defender for Cloud is not refreshing the score, right? So they would go here into this portal and they will go into the secure score um, tab and they will see that this is not changing. This is not reflecting anything. So I have here three little things to consider for this specific scenario. And the thing is that it's mainly due to hours time passing. So you just have to wait around like eight to 24 hours for the full policy compliance status to be um, updated, right? So that is one first thing that we have to pay attention to. Then the second thing is like, I mean, it's, it's something that also happens, right? But we need to verify that we actually executed um, the recommended remediation steps, right? That we actually follow the instructions and, and we actually remediated um, the issue. Because sometimes um, you go and then you kind of like read the instructions and kind of like solve the issue, but at the end you're not applying all of the description that, that we have there, right? So um, that could also be a factor and also a third one that is very important is to verify that this resource has not been exempted um, because exempted resources are not considered for secure score. So if you want to see if that recommendation has exempted resources, you can go into the tab that is called not applicable recommendation and you're going to see all of the um, resources that, are, that follow there and, and those are the ones that are being exempted. So that is one of the big issues that we have with customers around their secure score not being refreshed. Um, the second thing is that sometimes they come and they say, hey, I actually deleted a resource, um, but still the resource is counting against the secure score. And for example, my security and vulnerability um, recommendation shows it. Here's something that, that, that we need to emphasize is that for deleted servers or virtual machines, we need to wait at least seven days to see this reflected there in the in this recommendation, right? And for other resources, we can wait around like eight to 24 hours to see um, them being refreshed there. The other thing is that um, sometimes they say that the secure score is either not showing or the secure score is showing a zero percent. So here we need to do two things. We actually have to go into our environment settings and see if actually the policy is assigned to our, our subscription, right? Or into our management group. And so it doesn't have to look like this, right? So for example, this subscription doesn't have any existing policy assignments. And as you can see here, um, I'm actually getting like no information about it, right? And also here, I'm having um, this banner that says that one of my subscription doesn't have the default policy assigned. So also an easy way to, to kind of like drill into this issue is that once you come into this secure score tab, you can click here. And as soon as you click here, you're going to see the um, subscription that is actually um, not having the, um, the policy assigned. And then how you know that you have the policy assigned is that as soon as you assign it, you're going to have it like this, right? It is going to show here as a default initiative and that is going to be counting towards your secure score, your recommendations and, and all of that. Thank you so much again. Excellent, Fernando. Thank you very much for the tip.